Hey guys, welcome to TGS. Today we are going to look at this. This is an Abiatico and Sal Vanelli. We've looked at them in the past, but only in passing at other things at Holtz, which is where I am today. So, this little model is the Poseidon. Let's have a look. So what makes the Poseidon the Poseidon is that it is a detachable trigger gun. This particular one made in 2008 is of the modern era of Abiatico and Salvanelli. You might also know this company as FAMARS. FAMARS is short for Fabrica Army de Mario Abiatico and Remo Salvanelli. Yeah, that was right. FAMARS. It is a wonderful, wonderful gun making institute that is still around today in some respects and as I've said started in 1967. They were originally two gun makers who were commissioned I believe by an American chap to make a couple of guns and over time they really became the custom gun maker to the point they never made more than 110 guns a year and everything they make was to a bespoke serial number and a bespoke order spec. Over the decades they've made all sorts of interesting things that you know they made the self-cocking ejector single trigger hammer gun. I don't think that gun ever needed to exist, but I've seen them here at Holtz in the past and they are, I mean, they're wild. That is what they are. They made a limited run of 30 four barreled shotguns, one of which sits in the Breta gallery that hopefully we'll see in a couple of weeks time. These guys are well known for making beautiful guns. So when someone says FAMARS to you, generally, although they have made pretty much every gun under the sun, you'll be thinking of an over and under, although they have also made side by sides. To me, Abiatico is a finely engraved over and under. This particular one is a Marocchi or Marocchi engraved over and under, which is different and it's very different to the house Salvanelli style. And we'll have a look at another Salvanelli, like I said, in a few weeks time because I may or may not have purchased one. They love their Bellino, they love their fine scroll, they, they love their Acanthus, but generally they're not known for deep relief, which this is. And I think if we look at it, this gun is gonna certainly, some people will love it and some people won't. What this gun is lacking is the flash angular cut on the side of a lot of the Acanthus that we might expect to see on a gun of this style. However, what we have actually is almost 90 degree cuts into the depth. So we have the matted background with the flash, with the smooth or French grade top with some texture engraved into it. It is a very different style to what you'd expect. Obviously, pinless side locks, side plate trigger plate actions, there is a huge amount of different models of Abiatico, the Excalibur being probably the most common in the modern era. This is a Poseidon. Let me talk you through a Poseidon. This particular model is a 30 inch barreled gun. You have raised side ribs, so you end up, and the point in raised side ribs, by the way, is so you end up with this perfect wood to metal fit running through. It's, it's tarty, but you know, it's extra work and it is absolutely beautiful. You have the elongated four end iron, which is very nice. And again, it's the Abiatico thing that all the metal is always highly polished. They are very shiny guns. I think this one is valued at six to 8,000, which I think is good value, given that it is a very beautiful gun. And that is what Abiaticos are, as I've said, very beautiful guns. So the Poseidon is an over and under with a detachable trigger plate. Two interesting things about it is firstly, there is no gape. This is a gape. A gape is for when you open a gun, the fore end iron clicks into the gape. It's quite simple. They're on plenty of side by sides. They're on plenty of guns across the course of history. If you want a gun to open wide enough and have a shallow enough depth, what you have is a gape. You don't have a gape on here. Instead of a gape, you have a hinged fore end iron. So that, let's clip this back together. This is a number one reason to love a Poseidon. Click. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that's not the number one reason to love a Poseidon, but isn't that just a lovely little touch? Yeah, and just as it hinges up, sits across the top of the metalwork, doesn't rub anywhere particular, and just opens up. So you can open your gun fully while still having a shallow rounded action. You have Poseidon engraved in gold in the bottom, Abiatico in the side, and again, this deep sort of Acanthus-esque relief engraving throughout. It is interesting, that engraving. I do think it looks slightly out of place on an Abiatico, but only because it's an Abiatico. You stuck that on a Kriegoff, it would look, or uh, I mean, Blaza basically do a very similar engraving pattern on their guns, on their custom guns, and it looks, I don't know, it doesn't look better, just looks more at home. Here is the other thing about a Poseidon. The safety catch 
is manual on this gun. You pull the safety back, and then you pull it all the way back. Well, that came out a bit easier than expected. This is an Abiatico and Salvanelli trigger unit, or it is a Poseidon trigger unit. I think it is one of the finest looking detachable triggers out there. And as you know, I'm a big detachable trigger fanboy. It is a single trigger. You have a little rocker in the back for the inertia system. You have the main unit and a spine that comes all the way through that is machined from one piece. Then you have all of the lock work on the side, including V-springs, hammers, and all the things you would expect. And then, much like a side lock, those are clipped in place with a bridle each side, meaning this piece of metal here clips over the top holding everything in place on both sides. I think that's lovely. I am, um, you know, I, I don't think it's particularly clever. No, it is quite clever. I don't think it's like the most efficient way of doing things. It's clearly not, but it is bloody beautiful. And then they engrave it as well because they can. And look at this interceptor sear on here. Look, I just think that's lovely. That screw's slightly loose. Um, isn't that lovely? Look at how that just sits down into there. How can you not fall in love with that? as a thing. So, uh, the stock on this particular model is just over 15 inches with a horn-esque pad. No, that is a black plastic Bakelite. Fully figured with a pistol grip. Every single gun Abiatico made after, I think, 1975 was custom. So you could literally order whatever you wanted. In the modern era, after the two founders, or the passing of one of the founders, they, they changed like They re-released they re a lot of new models, this being one of them, and well, honouring their past but living in the modern era. And they did a very good job of that. Nowadays, they have changed again. They changed hands again a couple of years ago, I believe, and now they're making a few less guns, but they still exist. So that brings us into today, 2022. If you like, their, the lifespan of Aviatico and Salvanelli has had three eras, maybe four. But the original was with Mario and Remo. They started this company and they took it from that first decade to the point that they just made these wonderful custom guns. They were making cutting edge designs, boss style over and unders, pinless side locks, four barreled guns, self cocking hammer ejector guns, crazy cutting edge beautiful things and selling them all over the world with a big emphasis on America. That led into the second era when Christina Abiatico took over as their sort of head of sales, if you like. And I believe, according to Wikipedia, that her husband ran Il Bellino, which is why the sort of guns of that late 90s, early 2000s to a few years ago were so beautifully engraved because his company, well, they're one of the best engravers in Italy, decorated the guns. And that's why they have that beautiful Bellino engraving. And that brings us to the modern era. I have been told by a good friend of mine in Italy that they are now owned by a former employer of Famars, Mr. Pelli and they are making still fully custom guns, a few less per year than they used to. If you speak to people about Abiati and Co and Salvanelli, they'll, they'll come up with two things, generally, like as I said. The first is that they are unbelievably beautiful, and the second is that sometimes they have been considered perhaps not the strongest of guns. But, let's be honest, since when have the most reliable guns been the most beautiful? In fact, trying to get beauty and reliability in the same time doesn't really exist. Inherently, a bit like cars, having some sort of character and soul and unreliability adds to the enjoyment of ownership in some way. And you still want it to go bang every time, but you know, there is some fun to be had by having a gun with soul and character. Guys, thank you for watching. I've always had a deep fascination with Aviatico and Salvanelli, and I have never really been able to put my finger on it because they are just beautiful. Maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.